What's up guys? Today is delivery day. We're taking delivery for our 2023 Winnebago Revel. I'm so excited. We're gonna go pick it up right now, but there is like a two to three hour orientation uh, just to get familiar with the van. And then also we have to film, film. And then also we have to finalize and sign all our paperwork, but so excited. I'll probably do a little tour in this video as well. If you guys are new here, my name is Mikey. Hi, hello, welcome. Thanks for being here. But yeah, I'm just so excited. Our friends are gonna drop us off so that me and Donnie could drive it back home. And yeah, I'll take you guys along and we'll kind of check out the van together. And this is officially the first vlog with our van. All right, guys, here's our van. <laughs> <laughs> it looks different. It looks different from the last time we saw it. But <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> hey. That's cool. You guys, editing Mikey here. I just wanted to quickly say that a portion of this video is going to be dedicated to this orientation for the Winnebago Revel. A lot of my subscribers aren't into vans or stuff like that, so I have chapters down below if you want to skip this part of the video, because later in the video, we do take the van out for our first day of camping, just, just like a little quick day camping during Memorial Day, so check the chapters down below. That said, I do want to leave a big portion of this orientation in this video because I know there's a lot of you who are searching for the Winnebago Revel and hopefully this gives you guys a good idea of what to expect during orientation and delivery and stuff like that. I will say that they told me it would take about two hours but the, for us uh, only took about 30 to 45 minutes for us but that's also because me and Donnie have watched all of the YouTube videos we can on this on this van so we were pretty familiar with it. We didn't have a ton of questions and we were able to just go through it rather quickly. So yeah, if you guys are in the market for a van or an RV and you do go through an orientation, I do highly recommend that you record it on your phone just so you have it to look back on later because there are some things that I kind of forgot and I looked at the video and I was like, oh, okay, cool. So yeah. All right, so with that said, let's get back into the video. So this is just a rough representation of what you see at your typical campground. So you're gonna have, and all this will normally be like a couple feet away from where you have your van parked. Okay. So you'll have a an outlet like that for just a regular hose. And you can get these wide hoses for whatever you're trying to accomplish, you're just gonna refer to this diagram and then you're gonna set your valves in accordance with this diagram. So for example, we're dry camping right now because we don't have a real water hookup. There's a buffer. So turn your lithium ion batteries on and off directly. Um, now the easiest way to shut this whole thing down for storage is to just flip this main breaker right here. So if you're not gonna use it for uh, more than a couple weeks at a time, then I would shut this down and that'll shut down your inverter. It'll shut down your battery. Okay. I would, I would still turn this off. And then when you turn it back on, you're gonna flip that back up. And then that blue light's gonna be off because your battery got shut off. So you're, this is actually a button. So you're gonna press that button until the blue light comes back on. Got and that's how you're gonna restart your system. Okay. And then once you do that from here, everything else you can control up there. Normally gonna be on this side of your uh, van. You know you have power when these green lights light up. This comes off with this collar right here. Just undo this and then twist it to the left. You unplug it. When you plug it in, you twist it to the right and then you just put the collar back on to secure it. Okay. That you guys are gonna need, and which is a 30 amp power cord. And this is a 50 amp power cord. Mm -hmm. So some RV sites will have uh, one or the other or sometimes they'll have both. 
but they're totally different, so you can't accidentally plug into the wrong. Okay. But this one is 30, right? This one's 30. 30. So we would need a 50 adapter. So yeah, so you see what we're doing over here? That's we a 50. only have 50 amp plugs here. Got it. So, so this is the this is the adapter? Yep. So okay. we're adapting down from 50 to 30. Okay. It's a toilet. And this is the key for that. Again, it says Thetford on it. That's the manufacturer of the cassette toilet. Mm -hmm. And lock that. You want to keep this locked because you don't want to have to call the police and tell them somebody stole your crap. <laughs> <laughs> Here all week. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the way this works is you just lift up this lug from here, pull it out, open this guy up. What's that? And the convenience of this is you can empty this in any toilet. Okay. So if you're somewhere, even if let's say you just went to the beach or the park and all they have is uh, porta potties there, mm -hmm. you can take this right into a porta potty and dump it in there. Cool. Drain your gray water. Mm -hmm. So this is just the cap for it. Okay. This is open and closed. And you'll see our example over here. The gray water hose is just clamp on there just like the cap does exact same thing hose for the diesel burner for your furnace and water heater so it can get hot over here especially if you're wearing shorts okay this is where the diesel fuel goes most important part not going anywhere without that and you can use any diesel you can find at any normal gas station here and then you have one more here for a total of four key fobs. So all your friends and family can have one. <laughs> yeah. You need to have some kind of indicator. Yeah. It would suck to be driving I know, right? with that on like, and not so even right. know. Yeah. <laughs> so this is where your battery would normally be. Since it's not here, what Mercedes has done is they give you these posts to if you need to jumpstart the engine battery. You can put the positive cable here and the negative cable oh, goes on the gold post over there. Then you have your brake fluid here, windshield washer fluid here. Um, engine oil filter is on top on this engine. If you want to do your own oil changes, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, oil fill is here. There is no oil dipstick. You'll have a digital gauge on the inside that'll tell you how much oil your engine has. Uh, this is your engine coolant. Some people think Mercedes conveniently put a trash can in the engine <laughs> compartment, but they didn't. Don't put anything in there. Okay. And then this is where your diesel exhaust fluid goes. Are you guys familiar with diesel exhaust yes. fluid? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Not missing any plugs or anything over here. This is your drop down tape. And then you can adjust this to make it level if you're camping off road and you're kind of at an angle. When you put this up, I like to make sure that the cable is behind the table so that you can't get caught on the door when you open and close the door. This is where we drain the water out of the RV uh, system. So the center is for the, the main storage tank itself. And then the other two are for your hot and cold water lines. So if you open up all three of these, all the water will drain out underneath, just like that. Okay. And uh, that's how we would drain the whole water that's out. how you would okay. drain it all out if you uh you know park it leave those three valves open you shouldn't really have an issue with a uh, scale of water okay. inside the storage compartment or tank or lines or anything like that now one thing you want to be aware of is there's not a lot of the engine is out the door so if it's a windy day you want to bring this in with the door shut because the wind is slamming down and it could hit the top of the ground. Also I heard that there was a recall, like you had to put carefree sent out these wedges. Oh yeah, we did the recall. Oh, okay, cool. Them. Sweet. Yeah. Conveniently located, just reach in here, grab drinks. And this refrigerator does have its own on and off switch. So when we go inside, you'll see your fire extinguisher right there. 
my advice for the fire extinguisher is if there's ever a fire in here, everybody run past that, get out and call the insurance company. There's nothing in here worth dying for, and nobody's gonna be a hero with that little extinguisher. Got it. You have two that hold on to the driver and passenger side doors, and okay. they're held on by magnets. Awesome. Nice. There's a thing here too. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, they got a lot of cool little storage cubbies in here. So anytime you see switches like this that aren't labeled, they're gonna be light switches. So the middle is off and then up is bright and down is dim. Awesome. This one's the bathroom light. So I'll turn these on and then this one turns on the bright LED right, right there. Yeah. I didn't know there was a light or, there. Yeah. Or you can dim it a little bit. Yeah, that's a really cool uh, light strip right there. Now they need to find out a way to make it uh, Make it so you can change the color. <laughs> <laughs> Up here is the controls for your loft bed. You can turn that on and off with the key. So you have two pictures down here. This represents a power cord and this represents the diesel burner. So this is running off the same diesel fuel that the engine is running off of. Mm -hmm. It's plumbed directly into the tank and has its own fuel pump. So it can operate even if the engine's off. Okay. So you can run these independently, these power sources. Like for example, if you're at an RV campground and you just want to run the power cord because you're already paying for the electric, you know, you, you don't want to burn your diesel, even though this barely uses any diesel to begin with. But, uh, if you're boondocking and you just want to run the diesel burner because you want to save your batteries as long as possible, you can do that as well. But what uh, the, the manufacturer of this unit recommends you do is turn both of them on at the same time. Okay. If you turn them both on at the same time, what it'll do is it'll use the diesel fuel to initially heat everything up because the diesel fuel is quicker and more efficient and then it'll automatically switch over to electric power to maintain it. Okay. And that's just for heat for water? That's for both. Oh, for both, for heating. Yeah. Oh, okay. So to turn the furnace on, you're gonna grab this off here and... Oh, that's your temperature for the furnace. That's your temperature for the heater. Got it. And then to turn your water heater on and off, you're just gonna click that little button right there. Uh -huh. So when it's red, your water heater's on. Okay, so that's right. I'm gonna that's come right here. Uh, that's that same button that back there. Yeah, okay. Same button. Got some nice pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Whoa, it's really hot. Yeah, I think that's better than the pressure at my house. Hot already. <laughs> oh, yeah. Same with that. So this is where you turn your water pump on and off. This will tell you your tank levels. So right now our freshwater tank's at two thirds and our gray tank is empty. I know we put water in there, but the first sensor isn't up, isn't until like a couple inches from the bottom of the tank. So you gotta get at least a couple inches of water in there before it'll start registering anything. And then uh, battery level is right here. Okay, so it's chassis is the Chassis oh, is, up front. is the engine battery. And, right. house. and then you have your house okay. battery. Um, this is where you're going to turn your uh, inverter on and off from up here. Okay. Um, well, basically, if we're not using the, the voltage, we could just leave it off. Yeah, you can just turn it off. Okay. Um, what the inverter is going to do is give you the ability to use like outlets and stuff yeah. like that off the battery power. So if you're not doing anything like that, just yeah, leave you it can off. just shut okay. it off. It does have a parasitic draw on the battery. Okay. Know? And we don't have to worry about any of those buttons over there? No, okay. you just gotta worry about this on and, off. on and off. Okay. So that's on, this is off. If you have it on while you're plugged in, it doesn't hurt anything. Mm -hmm. The shore power just bypasses it. Okay. Um, and then this is your solar controller. That's fully automatic. You don't need to touch anything on there. Uh, so this is just controlling the voltage coming in from your solar panels. Okay. And then this is how you turn your solar pa panels on and off. So whenever you're using the van, you're just going to leave this on. You're only going to turn this off when you turn the batteries off for storage. Got it. Okay. 
remote control fan. That's just a fan? Yeah. Oh. And then you have some air in here. Oh, yeah. And you can see that even though it's open, there's still a cover over it. Uh, uh -huh. So you can have this open while you're driving or when it's raining. Cool. And this is the bathroom. So you have two shelves here that you can put on here if you wanted to just use this as a storage closet. Shower works just like the outdoor sprayer shower works. And then this is your vent fan. The way this opens is you just press straight up like that. And then you press this button to turn it on. And then to close it, you just pull straight down. Cool. New turn is you have this little bar right here. So to select a mode, you're gonna hit that bar. And if you have a fan mode, when it goes to cool, uh -huh. that's the AC mode. Okay. So, oh, whoa. So that's a fan high mode. If I hit it one more time, it would go to fan low. Um, and one nice thing about this AC is you can close these vents on the end, and then you can change all the airflow to these vents blowing straight uh, down on you when you're sleeping. So nice. at night, that really uh, works well. And if I hit it one more time, so now it goes to low. Uh -huh. Hit it one more time, it has auto. So that's where you can use these to adjust the temperature. Okay. And then if I hit it one more time, it has heat. So you can use this as an electric heater, but the furnace works a lot better. Uh -huh. And then if you hit it one more time, it turns it off. Okay. And if we're connected to shore power, it, it, won't, it doesn't use the battery, right? Correct. Okay. So these are your cameras. So you have front facing cameras, you have side cameras, you have rear cameras. And most people normally keep it like that, like, or like that for their rear camera. If you want to hook up a trailer, this will go all the way down to the tow hitch to make it a little bit easier to hook up the trailer. And a quick question too. Yeah. I, I saw on a forum that there was a fix for the wiring for the middle speaker. That I'm not sure about. Okay. Yeah, I don't normally go that in detail with the orientation. Okay. All right, guys, we just finished signing the orientation. We finished and then we did the paperwork finalized. We officially own the van. Crazy story is our finance guy finalizing the deal with the paperwork. I mean, he's literally moving into our community. He's our neighbor. <laughs> Small world. But we're in the van, we're gonna actually just park it here and kind of get situated and look at everything before we head home. So yeah, let's just okay. go. All right, um, so I'm gonna start with this. I'm a little shook. We own a camper van, but yeah, let's go park it and then we'll kind of just figure everything out. This is our garage right here. Actually, I'm gonna do the, the tour when we get home. We're just gonna kind of figure out everything right now. So I'll talk to you guys in a bit. All right, we're leaving the parking lot. Our first drive in the world. In our RV, in our camper van, in our Winnebago Revel. Okay, so what I wanna see is... I think we're just gonna go ahead and head home and explore the van more and kind of just tinker with everything what's up guys it has been now a few days since we picked up our winnebago revel and we've just kind of been driving around town just trying to get acquainted with city driving basically we took it to our family members house to show them um, it's been fun to drive but today it's memorial day blah, blah, blah. but today is memorial day so we're actually gonna take it dry camping and we're just going to the lake but we're pretty much just gonna be hanging out in the parking lot. Our goal today is to kind of just see what we need um, and make it like a fake camping day, take the girls with us, start to get them acquainted. A couple days ago, we actually were just like 
napping in the van in our driveway and having the girls walk around everywhere, be on the bed. Just kind of try to get comfortable with it. I don't know if I mentioned it, but it is Memorial Day today, so hopefully it's not busy. This isn't like a really big recreational lake. It's more for like fishing, um, so I don't think it'll be too busy today. Uh, but yeah, let's head out. All right guys, so we just started loading the truck. Let's open this bad boy up. All right. So again, this is just a quick day trip for a few hours, but we bought this REI little storage unit. Eventually gonna buy stuff to tie it down here so that it doesn't move around. But we basically have our chairs in here, some equipment, speaker, water, my drone's in here. And we're actually putting, <laughs> bringing our air fryer because we're gonna make some burritos. We have some dog supplies here, some miscellaneous stuff in this bag. And my camera bag, hiking bag with me and we're bringing our scooter. And that's pretty much it. Oh, we have our hiking and running shoes in case we want to go for a little hike or run. And then, <laughs> so far we have a dog bed. Um, we're not sure how we're gonna transport the girls. Um, we want to get like a little cage here so that they're safe. Or maybe a dog sort of seat over here because there's a seat belt you could attach a dog bed to. We're still trying to figure that out. Got this cool blanket. We have some blankets and pillows up there if we want to take a nap. And I think that's pretty much it for today. Again, this is kind of just, let me switch you guys over, hold on. Um, so again, this is just like a day trip, just to kind of test the waters, get the girls acquainted, and yeah, excited, should be fun. You sick of all the same dudes running up Follow you around, hope you fall in love But they don't see you like I do, yeah, yeah All your friends, they see it too That I'm the one who looks you in the eye Speaking like I'm meaning what's inside, I don't want No desire to try and play the part But I'm the one who made it to your heart Yeah, I show up on time, I know you need that love all right, we're in the van now. We're gonna do a little lunch. We have some carne asada burritos, so we are gonna air fry some of the meat right here. We have to turn the inverter on. All right, now we are gonna plug in the air fryer. Oh shit. Okay, I'm plugged. Okay, good? Mm -hmm. Hey, success. Look at that. Hi, Go. Yummy? All right, so, so far, so good. Again, like I said, I'm so glad we're doing this because like we're needing a bunch of stuff. Like even the air fryer, the cord doesn't reach up here. So we had to prop the air fryer up down there with some books. So we definitely need an extension cord. Also, I'm gonna do a proper tour of the van later. This, this video is just a delivery and kind of just a intro to our van life. So far, it's awesome. Yum. This is what we mean. There's an outlet right here, cord. And <laughs> we had to prop it up with a couple books for the air fryer cord for sure. So we got some sour cream over here, some cotijas cheese, guacamole, little Miss Aiko over here smelling the food. All right, we got our burritos done and ready. You hear that? We hear a buzzing. My freaking drone is beeping. Controller. Let's have a bite. All right, our first quick mod for the van is some dampening, so. We added some of these weather seal strips up here so that when the coach is driving, 
so that when the van's going at high speeds, this isn't hitting this anymore. So it's like a tighter feel. So if you kind of push on this, you don't hear it hitting the metal part. Or I don't even know if this is metal, but as opposed to here, like listen, you can hear this cabinet hitting the back wall, but here no longer. So yeah, let's just see strips right here. So I'm gonna add this onto this pantry one as well, all along here. Also, every time I open and close this, I feel like a stewardess, like, <laughs> or this one too. I'm gonna put strips here as well, but this is like literally stewardess status. All right guys, we are heading home. That was a day camp success. Next time we're gonna do an overnighter at a campground close by. But yeah, that was fun. All right, so with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and if you can, try to choose happy overside today and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye everyone. Bye, Donnie.